Yo, welcome in. So I usually never start off a video like this, but I actually have two pretty expensive unmade rune words right over here. So we've got Burr, Tear, Um, Mal, and Lum, and we have Ral, Ohm, Sir, and F sitting next to a five socketed War Axe and a four socketed Superior Worm Hide. Now, I don't know if you've ever tried anything like this before, but we're making a Beast Zerker. So we're going to have the Fanaticism Aura on the summons for the Summon Necromancer and we're also going to have a Thorns Aura from throwing on this Bramble on our Act 2 Mercenary. Incredibly powerful. So, Burr, Tear, Um, Mal, Lum. Now, for this particular instance, I mean, the Enhanced Damage roll isn't going to matter too much, but 248's actually pretty low, I guess. So it rolls between 240 and 270. That's the range on it. So for this particular build, like I said, not going to matter, but we use it on a melee character in the future. Not the best, but I don't think it's going to be a huge deal either way. And we got that fanaticism aura. And now for that bramble. Rail, Ohm, Sir, and F. And boom, we have a bramble. Now the poison skill is actually awesome because even though on this particular build, I'm not using poison damage, I just want the thorns aura for my mercenary. It does roll between 15 and 21, and I got 20. So that's a very, very, very good roll. I love it. And also for the poison damage, it rolls between a 25 and 50. So I got 48 poison skill damage. Also absolutely amazing. Everything else on it doesn't look too important or it doesn't roll any different. So both the things that roll, I got good rolls. About time Phil gets some of that good luck. Am I right, fellas? We'll toss that over on a mercenary right there and boom. Now we got a Thorn Zora. Now starting off, of course, we'll go ahead and look at the stats. Super quick, super easy. So we got just enough strength to wear your gear. I only added like 10 points. And then all the gear bumped strength up almost to 200 here. Dexterity, I added no extra points. Down here, we put everything else into vitality, nothing in energy. So a pretty standard max fight build. You see my resistances are not particularly high. If you would like to, maybe you're playing hardcore, or you want to just do this differently, have more survivability. Feel free to swap in like charms and stuff if you want to really max these out. You get so much survivability from having all these summons running around and stuff like that. Nothing's really attacking you that I don't really ever really need to worry about it. So I don't prioritize survivability unless I have a problem surviving. And since I don't, I just go ahead and don't really worry about it. So now we'll jump into where you actually allocate your skill points. And most of them are going into summoning skills right here. So that's where we'll go ahead and start off. So of course, we're gonna max out raise skeleton. These are what you're gonna be summoning up to go ahead and fight. That's your undead army right there. 20 hard points into that. Now you also wanna come over to the left here. It gets bonuses from skeleton mastery. So we're going to also want to go ahead and cap out that. Now you see it does get summon resist uh, bonuses from that. We don't go ahead and cap that out. It's kind of unnecessary. They're already very tanky. They have great survivability as it is. So we don't go ahead and worry about maxing out that one. But you can see we do go over and get one point into that. Now for this particular build, you see him roaming around right there. We actually use the iron golem, but we actually only put one base point into that. It doesn't get any more health from putting more points into it. It really only boosts up its defense, so it doesn't actually help its survivability put more points into it. You don't really care, like, uh, how much damage it does and all that good stuff. All you do is learn to survive. So actually, go ahead and boost uh, all the hard points into Golem Mastery. You see right there, 760% more life. So that's going to help your Iron Golem survive. So one point into Iron Golem, and then we went ahead and capped out, maxed out Golem mastery to keep that sucker alive now i'm using this build for one particular specific thing but if you're using this for general purpose farming like online when you don't want to respec all the time i would recommend to go ahead and get one point down to revives they can be incredibly helpful in certain situations but i know already myself on single player i'm not going to be in any of those situations so for me personally it's two wasted points for you though if you don't want to respec every other week or anything like that I would just go ahead and use the two points to get down to revives. There's several instances where you really want to have those. So we'll go ahead and jump over to poison and bone skills. Uh, pretty easy here. One point wonder into bone armor. Might as well get one point into it. Might as well use it. Help out your survivability. Um, I have heard arguments to go ahead and put more points into like bone wall. Then you can use bone wall. And it's also a synergy for right here, bone armor. But I go ahead and don't worry about that. I just use it as a one point wonder. So we got one point into teeth and that's just to get down to corpse explosion. I go ahead and cap that out with 20 hard points. That way you get the most radius possible, just absolutely melting the room. You don't get a damage bonus, but 
your kind of like DPS calculation or whatever, if you're hitting more monsters, you are putting out more damage per second. So I go ahead and cap out Corpse Explosion. And over here on the curses, I go ahead here and I put all of my remaining points, eventually maybe capping it out, and amplify damage. Now that boosts up your physical damage done to monsters. Half of Corpse Explosion is physical. So on top of that, all your summons, your mercenary, all dealing out physical damage. So amplifying damage them, that's going to be absolutely amazing. Now I have heard arguments to get down to Decrepify, but... I don't really feel this is necessary literally at all. The whole screen's melting in no time. If you wanted to get one point down to Decrepify, maybe just use it on certain bosses or something like that, I wouldn't blame you, but I don't feel like that's a route you really need to go. Let's go ahead and pump them into Amplified Damage. Now we're gonna take a look at the star of the show, the thing everybody gets excited about, and that is the gear on this particular character. And you see him right at the start, we don't need to hide it, don't need to give it any introduction. Right here, we have the Beast. This gives us this level 9 fanaticism aura, so that increases the attack speed of our minions, obviously like our uh, mercenary, and also it makes them deal out more damage. Absolutely amazing. Now, I went ahead and made this in a Berserker Axe, that way I could go ahead and use it on uh, melee characters and stuff. This is on single player for me, and I don't want to make like 7 different beasts, so uh, and the strength requirement, not going to be a problem either, because the other thing we have over here is the Spirit Shield. I tried really hard to kind of finagle things around the way I would like it in order to get, you know, one of the necromancer heads over here to kind of look cooler, go along with the lore or whatever, but I couldn't really swing it the way I wanted to. So we got the spirit monarch over here. Homunculus is a good option as well. And even like a dark force spawn could be a good option there too. Up on the helmet, I mean, if you're doing any sort of magic finding, any sort of farming, it's hard to steer away from a Shaco. So I'd say you definitely want to try to get yourself one of those. Now on the armor, pretty obvious choice. Uh, pretty much any character that is a caster that's not a sorceress, you want to have Enigma or Teleport, and really even on Sorceress you do too, but, you know, the Teleport skill, all the Strength, Life After Kill, all the Magic Finding based on character level, Enigma, absolutely goaded go-to option. Over on the gloves, we have Triangle's Claw. If you moved some things around, stuff like that, you could throw on some Chance Guards, get more Magic Find, but we went with Tranks here myself. Now, I got two SOJs for plus skills. Once again, if you needed to make up any res, if you want to go ahead and get some FCR rings here to reach a break point or something like that, uh, you could go ahead and do that. There's ones there at 75 and then 125. Personally, I got to the 75 one on this particular build, which is perfectly acceptable. Now on the belt, erect is mesh, pretty much the go-to option. There's obviously budget options you could throw down here, but you really want to try to get yourself this erect is mesh. Over on the boots, you know, different options, but magic find, love it, love getting magic find. You could go ahead and throw Marowaks over here or some Tri-Res boots to make them up over there. Now, for the amulet up here, we have Mara's Kaleidoscope. You could throw on a caster amulet, but I didn't need it to get to the breakpoint necessarily. So I decided to get some more all-res just to ever so slightly help out the survivability. But like I said, with all those summons, it's kind of unneeded. Now on swap here, we have the Call to Arms. And of course, we have a Spirit. Everyone knows what that stuff's pretty much for. Call to Arms, Battle Order, Battle Command, boost up your life boost up your mana, and uh, all the life of all your summons and stuff as well. Now down in the inventory, you want to go ahead, uh, Geeds, Torch, and Annie, if you can get them, you definitely want to get your hands on that, and summoning skillers, but unfortunately, single player, I haven't found a full allotment of summoning skillers, so I decided to go ahead and fill it up with Poison and Bone, so that's kind of bumping up the radius more of the corpse explosion, but yeah, generally, I would, I would try to get more summoning skills down here, like I said, you can make up resistances. You can stack more magic find down here. It's all up to you. Interesting enough, the only summoning skillers I found, three summoning skillers in like two years, they all have life on them. Kind of strange. But that's just uh, kind of a funny happenstance there. And we have 7% magic find small charms down here, taking up the remaining space in the inventory. Now, for the mercenary, I would recommend going with the might mercenary right here. That's going to go ahead and give you some more damage on your summons and all that good stuff. Now for the weapon, I went with infinity. Now we don't want any corpses to break, to shatter, because then that doesn't give you any corpses to explode, meaning you can't deal any damage. So you want to try to steer clear from any cold damage on your mercenary. Now, uh, right here, infinity has no cold damage. On top of that, the conviction aura actually lowers the defense slightly of the monsters that are being attacked, so they'll get hit more often. And on top of that, corpse explosion is half fire and half physical. So it's actually the Conviction Aura lowering their fire res actually boosts up half of the damage anyways of the Corpse Explosion. 
So Infinity is an amazing option here for the Act 2 Mercenary. And Darl's Visage up here gets him attacking a little faster. And of course, that's his form of Life Leech as well, keeping him alive. And then down here, I actually went ahead and made that Bramble and threw this on the Act 2 Mercenary. Now, don't sleep on that level 20 Thorns or actually sending the damage back that's getting dealt to your Mercenary and Skeletons and stuff back onto the actual monsters that can actually deal out a ton more damage. Really, boom, dealing a lot more kills a lot faster, getting that first corpse to blow up, and then they're melted down there. Now, the poison skill damage, not going to be important because I ain't dealing the poison stuff out, but you see I made this in a non-ethereal base. Once again, another circumstance of a single player. I don't want to go ahead and uh, make several different brambles. So even though if you're online and you're specifically only making this bramble for your Act 2 Mercenary, putting it technically in an ethereal base is going to be slightly better. And now just super quick, in case I didn't mention it, I believe I did, but right here, this is an iron golem made out of an insight. That way you get the meditation aura in order to keep your man up, because if you don't have an insight, if you don't have the meditation aura, it can take uh, quite a toll on the amount of kill speed, because you're going to be running out of mana all the time, slamming those corpse explosions, teleporting around, and things like that. So on this build, we have might, we have fanaticism, we have meditation, we have conviction, which goes on the enemies, but we also have that thorns aura. So we actually have four different auras on all of our summons and on our character and everything all at once. On top of that, with that conviction aura going out, helping out our kill speed even more right there. And now so you can see the important things on the stats page. We have over 300 magic find you see right there. If you scroll down a little bit more, you see we're all right at the 75 FCR breakpoint. So that's good right there. We hit it exactly right on. And anything past that, not going to be incredibly important. That's the two important things. Make sure you get at least 75. If you have go into a different type of build some way, go to the 125. But 300 magic find, a great amount to get to. Just for time's sake, I will go ahead and show you a trick. When you start up a game, you can come out here into in front of Pindle. And just go ahead and bring up all your skeletons from out here. A-OK, -okay, no problem. There you have a full allotment of skeletons, so go ahead and do whatever runs you're doing. But now, go ahead and buff everything up and let's head out to the pits. Here we're on players three difficulty. We're gonna do all these runs and look how this just absolutely melts. So here you just come around a group, amp damage, one goes down, corpse explode, and everything is gone. Amp, corpse explode, gone, move on. It is that easy. It's absolutely incredible with the whole thorns aura, all that corpse explosion damage. We're obviously gonna check things on the video because man, it's hype finding something sick when you're filming the build guide video. But yeah, it's just so simple. The skeletons really just take so much out. The mercenary does a ton of damage with this beast, with the fanaticism, the might auras, the amp damage, all that stuff combining together. And even the thorns, holy smokes, is this build absolutely crazy. For this particular uh, down in the pits, great spot to do any of the corpse explosion necros, but we're gonna pop it to player's eight difficulty, head down to the lowest level. That way it'll, we know for a fact that we'll go ahead and reset the player seven difficulty or players eight difficulty excuse me and you'll see even how good it is down here in the pits even on players eight so there we are players eight difficulty and right there amp damage corpse explode they all go down right there amp damage corpse explosion pop 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 out they go you can see it's ever so slightly slower but of course we up the players count even higher of course it's going to be am i right but it still is absolutely amazing survivability and safety is totally there like i said even without the resistance is absolutely capped what danger are you ever really in right all right we got all our skeletons uh we're going ahead and march right here into a player's eight chaos sanctuary so hit 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 obviously chaos sanctuary is going to be a lot slower but once one monster goes down corpse 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 and yeah that pack is gone you can go ahead and move on so this is, yeah, some of the hardest content in the game for clearing and magic finding anyways. So amp damage, we got all the monsters around, all amp damage. A couple monsters go down, start hitting the corpse explosions, and pop, pop, pop. And the pack gets ripped out. And yeah, that's players eight difficulty solo. That quick and that easy. Amp damage, mercenary gets up here, chops one out. Start corpse exploding with the thorns damage, with the conviction auras and all that good stuff. Yeah, even players eight difficulty, this Chaos Sanctuary is nothing. It's trivial to this character. And we'll do another test out here at the Frigid Highlands. This is a pretty easy one to clear here. And once again, we're sticking with it on players eight difficulty. So a couple of them go down, corpse explode, corpse explode, all cleared out. 
absolutely no problem. And we'll move down from Eldritch now to clearing out Shank. Right here, amp damage them all up. One down, another one down, and the entire group gone. Just absolutely disintegrated. We'll pick some of this up and check her out. Eh, kind of interesting looking, but not really that great. Now with this build, this undead army, absolutely amazing at clearing large mobs. Not as great at the act bosses, such as Diablo, but it just is great for farming up a ton of stuff in this particular game. Let me know things that you like to do a little bit differently on this particular build. Hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe up if you are new. Peace out, fellas, and keep slaying.